When you don't have your rifle with you, this is, of course, what happens. Tom Davis is now looking shifty when he meets farmers in the road. It's March and they're worried about their pregnant ewes that are about to produce spring lambs. We're out after foxes at night and Tom is feeling guilty. I haven't done much recently to other reasons, but yeah, so hopefully we'll see a few tonight. What other reasons? Um, I've been busy being dad of the year. <laughs> well, dad, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> attempting, trying. <laughs> yeah, it's been a very hectic few months, you know, game season, baby, venison, it's all been a bit manic. Um, so, you know, any spare time I've had, I've been wanting to be at home with the baby, to be honest. And uh, I've been doing a bit of foxing, um, you know, with a farmer, landowner calls me. I've been going and sorting that, but um, but yeah, not, not too much. <laughs> Before we get started, Tom wants to check the zero on his new thermal so scope, a Pulsar Krypton. He has a new target from Pulsar that lights up the thermal scope so you can zero at night. So you've got um, some thermal zeroing targets made by Pulsar. Um, I'm going to give these a try. I've, basically, I've just been doing some research on the Pulsar Krypton, which is um, a front-mounted thermal add-on onto your day scope. Um, and some people have found that there's had a different point of impact with the bullets on um, using that scope. So I've, I haven't actually tried using this on target. I've just put it on and cracked on and used it and had no issues. But I just thought I'd give it a go on these targets, which I haven't used before, which are uh, air activated thermal targets. I'll get one out, I've got one in my pocket. So that's them there. Um, it says don't take them out of the packet until you're ready to use them, just simply, I'm guessing the heat only lasts for a certain period of time. I actually feel it. there's a bit of warmth to that. The first two shots with the Krypton um, is these two here. You can see they've gone right, um, you know, knocking on two inches there from centre of the target. Um, so we thought, oh, is it the rifle? I was confident it wasn't, and yeah, that's the two shots without the Krypton on, just using the headlights of the truck. Um, yeah, pretty good. Um, so what I've done, I then adjusted the Krypton scope. Um, I moved the picture across, so I collaborated the Krypton with my scope to centrise it all. I think I'm using the right words. <laughs> no, you're not. There's, there's, there's such I know what I mean. Collaborating. No, you can collaborate, not collaborate. Following successful collaboration, where are we going to go first? Still, the, you know, dog foxes will still be travelling around and whatnot. It was, it was only it was only last week. Um, I was out stalking, and there's a lot of um, activity going on. Um, them calling, so they're still at it. Um, so they do they do come down off the moor. It's like uh, all this area, you know, all the farming does back onto the moor, so you, you'd never clear the fox population here. You know, you, you can you keep on top of the numbers, but you know, every week more will come down off the moor and come inland. We drive to the first farm and set out on foot. It has guinea fowl, and the farmer complains that while the foxes wait for the ewes to drop lambs, they are munching their way through the birds. Not too over there. The advantage of foxing in the foothills of Dartmoor is that you can look across hills and valleys and see thousands of acres from one place. Tom spots a fox and calls it in. Well, it, it come out um, the trees and it, yeah, I'll say it comes about 40 yards and we're stood right on the skyline here. Um, you see there is no cover for us to stand behind and it's the best viewing point for this valley. And yeah, you know, Fox is normally pretty switched on to that, but yeah, he must be uh, fairly peckish because he come right in <laughs> to the cool. So um, yeah, got the job done. Yeah, dog. Yeah, I thought it would have been. You dinky little dog though. Really? Not really massive, but still a guinea fowl lover. <laughs> Former guinea fowl lover. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no more guinea fowl for this one. So. 
Hopefully that is the one. We spend time chasing distant eyes. You can see such a long way with the thermal, sometimes you have to accept that by the time you've got to where the fox is, it will have moved on. The next place is a field next to a lambing shed. started to run away now when I called it come back down it just sat behind the hedge and I couldn't see it and eventually come through so and that's the uh, hopefully that is the uh, lamb killer it's been it's been the lambing sheds literally just here and he's been lingering around there and in front of the lamb field for a couple of days now so um, hopefully that's the one and it's literally on my doorstep. <laughs> oh Christ, I thought it looked a bit messy in the bloody scope. That was facing me as well. Guys, what a mess. I shot that front on as well. Just sat. I can't even see where that is. Vixen. Cubs. She's dried up, isn't she? She's completely dry. She's got cubs somewhere. We'll see what I can do. If they, you know, I can only do what I can do, but hopefully if I see them, I'll dispatch them. Two on the ground is a good night. The farmers can sleep better, and Tom can stop trying to avoid them in the lanes. Later on, he mops up the cubs and sends me this thermal image. And if you are interested in the Pulsar Krypton and want to know whether it's right for you, there's a link in the description below to the Choose to Compare kit comparison tool on Pulsar's website.